Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. My name is Evelyn Matthews. Art came by me naturally. I've always been very visual. To actually get started in art, it happened when I was in college. I would take an art course to offset the psychology course I had to have, or I'd take an art course to offset the higher math, and lo and behold, I ended up with an art minor without even knowing it. And then I went on to get my master's in art. I had a very nice childhood. My mother was a school teacher, which was kind of unheard of. She got her college degree in 1931, I think it was. So, and my dad was not educated. Uh, he ended up being a contractor after we sold the farm, but he only went through eighth grade. So how they got together, I will never know, but it was a very happy marriage. <laughs> I married my high school sweetheart. He went in the service and I went to college so that we could get married when he got out. And then, uh, that was at Mankato, um, I got my teaching provisional degree in two years because I took extra credit. So I started teaching when I was 19. Um, married Bill when he got out of the military. Uh, moved up here in 59. We both, I taught at the high school and Bill was a coach and a math teacher at Franklin Junior High, this building in fact. Um, and we were gonna stay for three years, but we got going with the scuba diving business and we bought lots of property and lo and behold, what is it? Many, many years later, we're still here. We've got three kids, they're all married, they all have kids, um, good life. I have one great grandson. I had over 8,000 students at the college, by the way, and I used to tell them, oh boy, you get in art and you have natural highs. You don't have to work at being happy. You're just going to be happy. When I first started, I was very conscious of what others thought. And after about the first five years, I decided, oh, I don't care what they think. If I'm enjoying it, that's the important part. So I went on to do things that made me happy. When we bought this building in 1990, we decided the architecture was so weird because it's poured concrete. So we would have to do something with the interior that would fit in with the idea of poured concrete. And the first idea was to do this for a floor, you know, as you come in the front door. Well, I started working on it in 1991 or 92 and worked on it for quite a while. I was sensible. It's put together with two foot squares because I knew if I had to exhibit it somewhere, the only way I could move it would be as if they were small pieces. So it, it was movable at one time. It isn't anymore. It took, <laughs> it took a whole lot of work to get it up on the wall. Finally, I had a couple students that were doing kind of like an internship. So I let them work around the outer edges. The theme, of course, are the dolphins and the scuba diver. I have done small mosaics in the past, but never anything this big. I'm glad I did it. Overall, it turned out fine. And it is eight feet by six feet, and it has 6,950 or something of those little tile. This is one I use for young children. It's hands-on. These fish I sewed, stuffed them, put Velcro on them, and the kids can come in and rearrange it any way they want. This is called recycling, by the way. Um, this is styrofoam. This is a bad mitten um, net that I had laying around the house. I was given a Bush grant, and I went on a one-quarter sabbatical. They gave me money to study the Mississippi from uh, the headwaters down to Little Falls. And at the time, I was a private pilot, so I would fly the plane to these different destinations, often to Bemidji, leave it parked there, rent a car, and go out. But I have a series of 18 of the Mississippi River. This one is done as an impressionistic painting, and it's down in Little Falls area. It's just the rocks. It's actually one of the last ones of the series. The inspiration for the next one with the Negroes, we did a program in Brainerd called differing visions, and photographers and artists and poets and musicians all got together and came up with this presentation. It's a long time ago. The black and white photo is part of the study I did of New York City when we were out there for the gates. 
our daughter is the one on the left with the black coat on. That's the carousel, the old, old carousel, and we rode it. Such fun. I love carousels. That photograph is important to me. I did a whole series. I've got, I think, 30 photos that are framed. This is an abstract of a painting that you'll be looking at next. Uh, I teach everybody how to take a realistic interpretation, simplify it, and make it into abstract design, and this is one of them. I know it, it's just an abstract composition that you've just looked at. This is the realistic one. And the students thoroughly enjoyed sketching birds in this zoo. It's a beautiful zoo. Oh, here's the painting I was looking for. There are 97 fish in that. And the only ones that have actually found them are little kids. Like I had a nine-year-old that sat I don't know how long. And he just said, yeah, I can find them. I can find them all. Um, most adults get bored after finding about 30. <laughs> but but it, it's fun. It's challenging. I did a series of European paintings after I'd taken students to England on a study tour. And I've actually been to Stonehenge seven times, and every time the sky is just wild. Traveling in Europe for nine years, taking students, I have been exposed to so many different types of art, and they all come back and say, oh, I don't want to just paint. Let's try something new and, and different or unusual. And I think that's the true artist creativity in you. It was a good experience, and that's one of the things that art allows you to do. You can organize in such a way that everybody enjoys it, because whether you're teaching them, we did a lot of black and whites too, whether you are doing just the black and white or you're teaching them the color theory, it's always a learning process. And because it's visual, most people enjoy it. Many of my former students have come back and it's exactly what has happened to them. They, they get this happy feeling when they do art. And I think part of it comes from sharing with other people. I don't know what I'm gonna do till I start. I don't have anything in mind. So we'll just go for broke. I just love to paint. It's so relaxing for me. I don't know how people cannot enjoy painting, but sometimes they don't. I'll show you wet on wet. That's kind of spontaneous. What you do, you have to wet your paper first. And normally I just run it under the faucet, but it's too hard to get over there right now. I think I'm gonna work with a an unlimited palette, which means I have the prerogative to do anything I want. And one thing you learn as an artist, you have to repeat colors or your continuity and the balance is just not good. So if I put it down one place, I'm going to probably put it down two other places too. I like to work with color theory and if there's green, I like to have red next to it because they're opposites. If they flow together, they turn on into mud, however, so you have to be a little concerned about where you're putting it. As you can see, I'm just adding color. I, I like to add color, see what it makes me think of, and then go from there. That's why I hated sketching always. I'm just going to be playing, and I'm organizing color, basically. And the colors make me think of flowers. What I'm doing is putting down value changes and intensity changes. Now, value change means light and dark. Intensity means bright and dull. And you can see some of these areas are much brighter than others. I love color, as you can see if you look around the room. I am mixing the oranges and the reds and the yellows. I think I'll put a dark center in that one. You're probably thinking, so is she doing one flower, ten flowers, or three flowers? I don't know yet. It all depends on how I feel. Now it's more fun if you create as you go. Your interpretation in watercolor, the very best is spontaneity. You know, react to what you see. But I think the fun part of art is you can organize in such a way that you are going to imprint an image on someone's mind and they won't forget it. The impact that art has had on my life is something that is really close to my heart because I have found joy, I have found contentment, I have found 
excitement. I have found challenges. Um, I'm the type that always says you have to push boundaries, and in art you can do that. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.